guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Wednesday, January 24th. In between a gap of games, Celtics have a two-day break here as they travel from Texas to Miami to take on the Heat, uh, which is tonight as you guys are listening to this initially. And uh, they just took down the Rockets and the Mavericks in a two-game slate uh, in Texas back-to-back. Uh, how are you doing, Sam? I haven't. T- it feels like I haven't talked to you in a long time because we talked for like ten minutes yesterday. We t- usually talk. It's for weird, that, isn't it? Usually yeah. Wednesdays we're fucked because we have talk and sees, and Bobby is traveling, so we'll get that. You'll have that later today. Yes, and yes. then uh, we have pregame, and then we have to record this, and then we have the post game. So yeah, this is a very like weird week for us. It's almost mm-hmm. like we have like a week off, but we still do all the same <laughs> content we usually do. It's just stacked differently in the days. It's less of it. So I'm relaxed. I just went to dinner with my dad. That was great. We had dessert. Mm -hmm. A little flex. Good time. Did you (laughs) have Chick-fil-A today, Jack? Uh, You know I did. What'd you get for for dessert at the the place? Strawberry shortcake per his request. Mm, Strawberry shortcake's very good. What's your favorite dessert? You don't seem like a dessert guy. Am I crazy? No, I like dessert. dessert I just don't eat it. (laughs) Okay. The best dessert ever is the cookie skillet. And there is no debate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I I am partial to a lava cake myself. I am a big lava cake. I actually cake don't even know if I've ever had a lava cake. What? So I can't so disagree good. with you. Very good. It's very good. You should try it. It is cookie skillet's obviously very good. I'm thinking in the uh, in the realm of chilies now because those are both those are like the two chilies like mainstay yes. desserts. Lava cake's very good. I, I always recommend. get a kick out of chilies because my girlfriend would never eat there like that. Applebee's. Like she always Why? just trashes them because they're like chains. So and well, Chili's is awesome. What is that? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> this is like an early relish. Why does she hate? What does she have against Chili's? Hello. What does she have against Chili's? I don't know. She just doesn't think the quality of food is like up to par. Like there's a zillion local places you could go. Ten. I'm OK with that. Like I would oh, go to Chili's. Chili- I know. I feel like we've gone to Chili's, even though we went out to eat like once because you were us? around. I don't here. think we've ever been to Chili's. I've gone we to went. Chili's. They have the cookie skillet. You get the, you get the awesome. cookie skillet. You have the Cajun chicken pasta. Yep. Uh, fine establishment. Bacon, um, chicken, ranch, quesadillas are great. The ribs are great. Like they've got, they got it all. It's chill. Yeah. I, I we can't have that. That's that's disgraceful that she doesn't like Chili's. But anyways. Regardless, sorry, we spent the first two minutes talking about Chili's. We can, in fact, get into the Celtics. It is weird because we don't have a game to throw it over to. But uh, the first piece of Celtics stuff that we got is Team USA just announced its initial pool of 41 candidates um, for the Olympics next year. Uh, And the Celtics have four players on the list. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, and Derek White are all potential candidates to that could be named to the final roster. I'll share it on the screen. I'm not going to read all the names. Um, However... No, read all the names and do it like you're Tim Robinson in the drive through <laughs> You want me to actually? You want me to, want me to no, go through it? Are you sure? <laughs> Pamela by Jared Allen Powell. Get <laughs> doesn't do it. Actually, yeah, do it. You want me to go through the whole thing? Okay, ready? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Here we go. <laughs> Ben Bio, Jared Allen, Paolo Bancaro, Dustin Vance, Scotty Barnes, Devin Booker, Mikael Bridges, Jalen Brown, Jalen Brunson, Jimmy Butler, Alex Caruso, Stephen Curry, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, Anthony Edwards, Joel and B, Darren Fox, Paul George, Aaron Gordon, Terry Salbert, and James Harden, Josh Hart, Tyler Hero, Drew Holiday, Chet Holmgren, Brandon Ingram, Kyrie Irving, Jaron Jackson Jr., LeBron James, Cam Johnson, Walker Kessler, Kawhi Leonard, Jimmy Lillard, uh, Donovan Mitchell, Chris Paul, Bobby Portis, Austin Reeves, Duncan Robinson, Jason Tatum, Derek White, Trey Young. That was pretty hey, good. You I, didn't I, I, that I, once. <laughs> I heard Eminem rap God when you were when you were doing the names. <laughs> I was I was running out of breath towards uh, Donovan Mitchell because I, I think I messed up <laughs> Damian Lillard a little you bit. You should have but... just made yourself like, pass out. <laughs> I should have said no breath. <laughs> I got I got to like Jaron Jackson Jr. without a breath. I was I was kind of cooking. I can't this, lie. That was very impressive. You did Thank not you. get tied up once. <laughs> I tried. I tried. I felt myself slipping around Damian Lillard, but we saved it by Chris Paul. Don't worry about it. Um, anyways, Chris Paul, also uh, very weird selection for this. Well, if you ask I was going to ask, what is the weirdest selection? I think Chris Paul is a fine answer. Duncan Robinson, also a quite an interesting answer. Oh, that one um, slipped past me. Yep. <laughs> I mean, Sam, you, uh, you didn't hear me just say all the names. I said them clearly. I, I can't even find them. I'm trying to look. Oh, there he is. Okay. Uh, second row from the bottom. Outside of that, they all do make some sense. Um, Camp Johnson's kind of a weird one. 
Yeah. See, I, this is my thing. And I wrote about something like this. Oh, I'm still out of breath. Whew, I wrote about something <laughs> like this. Uh, this this has to be like, I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked again. This is like an all-time first five minutes to a show. Like we started with chilies. We used to we just do just... like 20 minutes of bolt. We, the Rattlers used to essentially be the first like 10 minutes. I know. And we moved it to the back so we could start with Celtics, but we got off track. And we're, we're out of the flow. Anyways, um, I wrote about something similar for eight points, nine seconds when I was discussing Tyrese Halliburton's potential case to make the Olympic team after his run in team USA. And a point that I made was I feel like team USA, especially watching that FIBA team over the summer, that kind of bombed relative to expectations at the very least um, is they might do better where they don't have stars filling the end of the bench. Like they could use some role players. Like they don't need all stars because you, you need guys that are used to playing certain types of roles. Like, for as much as we said Duncan Robinson's weird, like him and Cam Johnson are just going to be comfortable playing off the ball and moving without the ball, right? Look at Josh Hart. He's a guy who's comfortable moving off the ball. He'll help them with the rebounding. Uh, um, Derek White is another great example. You can kind of do a little bit of everything. Aaron Gordon is another one. So I, I do think there's value to at least considering these guys for very niche specific roles on this team. Alex Caruso as well. And I, I think there's a chance some of them get on as I feel like it would benefit Team USA from trying to make a team rather than just bunch of good star players do you know what i'm saying i feel like that could help them in the long oh i i completely understand what you're saying and it's actually like making me think and this i know we've talked about and probably won't happen i feel like the game of basketball itself is going to get like or it should get restructured where nothing changes about your team but they just have like roles that are essentially called positions so like instead of like two guards two forwards in a center you have uh a playmaker a shooter a shot create like <laughs> Almost like 2K archetype because that's, I was just really what say that. that's really what you're doing with your team, though. Like what you just laid out not only makes sense, but it's also what I'm saying. Like mm. you don't need five uh, shot creators. You need a little bit of everything. It's like baseball. You don't need 12 sec or 12, nine second basemen. You need someone that could play every position. You need guys mm. to fill their right roles or football. Football is probably a better example. Because baseball, like, I know you can't move guys around. <laughs> yeah, no, but, I agree. I, yeah, definitely. Um, before we go away from this, I just thought of it. And we don't have to if you don't want to, but let, I I like th that you agreed with the concept of making a team rather than a team of all stars. Can we build the best team out of this pool of candidates? Not the best, not like LeBron, sure, Stephen, like sure some of those guys will be on it. We don't have to do it like, or we don't have to like spend a ton of time on it. But I think it'd be interesting to put out what we think it should be it's a 12-man roster right correct me if i'm wrong uh i believe it's a 12-man roster we're gonna go with the 12-man roster um but i can i can look it up and we can double check as we go um how many roster spots on team usa let's see um 12 roster spots yeah okay um so we can start with the starting lineup lebron steph kd obviously gonna be in it right am i crazy yeah i feel like those are the first three obvious ones so let me we'll do this um Stefan <laughs> like how tiny it started writing because I forgot to change the font size. <laughs> Shit. Hold up, hold up. All right, here we go. Uh Stephen Curry is gonna start. Um LeBron James. Oh, I'm just gonna put him at the three. Uh LeBron and KD, those are gonna be in the starting lineup. Um past that, like I was Clay on the list? I don't think Clay is on the list. He's I don't believe so. He shouldn't be. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I think Tatum and Devin Booker are also locks, if you ask me. Weirdly enough. Yeah, like they're locks, but this is going to defeat the whole purpose of what we just said. Yes, but I don't <laughs> think. That's just not how this works. <laughs> I know, but OK, fine. And the reason but... why it doesn't work that way is because although every single player that we've named to go on this sheet can be the guy they also can be like the catch and shoot or the facilitate yeah. or the rebound like that's why this kind of is lame and i also like hate international play because up until this point in history it's just been usa steamrolls everybody there's been more and more of oh wow these other countries are actually competitive like canada actually are has like a good roster yeah uh serbia just came in second place in the world cup and Jokic didn't play Germany has some like fun players on their team. But at the end of the day, for that to happen, Team USA still like had to like trot out the C team. 
Also true. So yeah. did you, in doing this, do you want to build what we think the team will be or what we think the team, like Just what, do the what best we think roster. the team will be? Cause it, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. It doesn't sure, matter. Sure, sure. Yeah. I know. When, when uh, I saw this, well, I put this on the sheet, but like when, when you read the thing and you were going to toss to me, I was going to say, first and foremost, this is a great achievement for these guys, but I also don't give a flying fuck. <laughs> so for what it's like, worth, I think this will be the starting lineup or maybe Booker in for Tatum, but I think Curry, James, Durant, and probably Bam, uh, unless unless Anthony Davis, I guess, maybe. But Oh, I it'll be Anthony those, Davis. I, I just wasn't sure if he'd like This is going to be a big like LeBron circle jerk. So Chris Paul's also going to be on the team. You think so? I don't think he gets it. No, no, there is not a doubt in my mind that Chris Paul's on this team. Okay. He would not be in the pool unless LeBron was like, I want him on the team. Okay. He's a banana boat guy. I suppose. The only active banana boat member besides LeBron. This is true. Uh, If Melo comes out of retirement and joins the team. (laughs) Captain America. It's all he does Um, in the Olympics. Past that, I wonder wonder how many more stars they go with versus like actually putting in some role players because like even last olympics i know they didn't have the avengers like wanting to play but like keldon johnson and javel mcgee were on that team <laughs> so it was like it you know what i'm true. saying you think Derek uh, white gets on i was thinking it but You're i don't know put him on who you I'd, shouldn't i'd obviously like him to get on. i don't i don't think he'll make the cut I, I think if there was a role player like they say okay let's get a guy he'd be one of the first options weirdly enough i think him and josh hart would have a good chance they seem like they get along with a lot of people in general and they're pretty easy like free flowing like in general um so i think those two i i just don't know past this um i'm like making sure i didn't miss any any stars oh let's Kawhi go do we think Kawhi commits i just don't know if he'll actually do it i feel like Kawhi just doesn't want to play i agree <laughs> i feel like i think just he would be like i'm not interested in this yeah please leave I agree. me alone what about harden he's on it i think harden will be on it you think Harden will make it? Okay. Yeah. He's like one of those like kind of grandfathered in guys that is buddy buddy with a lot of the top guys in the league. So yes, I, I do think he gets in. Okay. Uh I think Devin will be on there too, obviously. <clears throat> Are we missing any of the like obvious ones? Oh, wow, we're stupid. Oh my god. Joel Embiid is Team USA. Oops. Oh, he's Team USA. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for what it's worth i think bam and anthony davis will also make it because they do need some big guys so i mean at this point we have two spots left for for a bunch of guys who we were probably looking for you know who i bet gets on anthony edwards i think anthony yeah edwards he'll get on in. because they have to be like this guy's got next and lebron can yeah. like anoint him and be like i told you guys he was good before anybody knew it <laughs> uh and that leaves Hall- halliburton is the other one for the same reason yeah, okay. I think that makes sense. Did we miss any obvious ones? Young though? Kings, they have the keys to the team now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Paul George will probably get on. Did we miss them? Maybe. Jimmy Butler, also on Jimmy this Butler's list. Jimmy Butler's not going to want to play extra basketball. He barely wants to play their actual season. I wonder if Drew Holiday gets in. Remember that report before the season that said, like, oh, they're recruiting him, and he, Drew Holiday was like, I have not gotten a single call from any of those guys. <laughs> oh, Kyrie. Yeah, Kyrie will be on it. Oh, He's Kyrie on. will be on it. Uh, pro- sorry, Halliburton, you're you're getting booted, brother. <laughs> Interesting. I, I am interested to see how it shakes out because obviously I think some people also. This is gonna. You know how this is gonna shake out? Is I'm gonna root against them. <laughs> Who are you rooting for? Claim your team now, Sam. I'll Canada? probably whoever. I'll probably root for whoever. Whoever's like up next. <laughs> I'll hop on. I I would do anything for LeBron to fail. I'm already in. Like I'm already in. Like I want to see them lose. I wonder, and I don't care that Tatum's a part of it. What are the FIBA World rankings? I know USA wasn't ranked first for a while. I don't for a think bit. that's like real, because I've looked at that, and I don't know how that. Like maybe I looked at the league rankings because at a time when we were doing the summer league stuff, I was like, which mm-hmm. league, like besides the NBA, yeah. is like the actual league for us to put value into? Mm-hmm. Um, for what it's worth, USA is first, Spain is second, Germany, Australia, Serbia. I mean, what are we talking about? Like, <laughs> USA is like first and second and third. Maybe first. Well, and this second. is maybe not third. <laughs> this is um, it's it's purely based on how teams have fared in world play. So it's not like how good the team is. It's like it that takes a big part of it. So I don't know. It, it, USA is USA team. should be like with a grain of salt. They trot out their <laughs> third best team every time there's a competition I know, I know, that's I know. not the Olympics. <laughs> I know, I know. (laughs) Anyways, all right. Um. The NFL season is wrapping up. 
And there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. Now, the app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. We'll move on. Next Celtics thing we've got is an idea that has been slowly floating around Celtics Twitter for a million years now. Terra is just traded to the Heat, which we'll talk about in the NBA section, which everyone is like, oh, will Gordon Hayward be available? Can the Celtics sign Gordon Hayward? Can you know? Can this happen? No. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> they cannot sign Gordon Hayward. The title of this podcast, partially, is evaluating the wildest Celtics edition ideas or, or the craziest or the most unlikely. This one's unlikely because it's literally not allowed. It is literally impossible for Which the Celtics to sign Gordon Hayward on the All of a sudden, the Celtics are good, and everyone's like, no more stacking teams. But when Brooklyn was doing it two years ago and I was on here crying, it was okay. I was like, oh, like they got to stop getting free guys. Like their team's not stacked enough. They need Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge, who still didn't get him past the second round. But at the time, I was rip shit pissed because I was like, that's stupid. And Blake Griffin also, by the way, was like about to come here before he actually did. And then Tristan Thompson told him no. And now Tristan Thompson's on performance enhancing drugs and isn't getting the <laughs> performance enhancing part of it. I was going to say, question for you. Is, is Tristan Thompson the worst player or the least least effective PED user ever? Thoughts? I I want to say yes, but you know there's like someone that you didn't even know did it because they're so bad. <laughs> um, also, we In just like saw a, uh, <clears throat> a tweet. Keith Smith just tweeted. Apparently, there was an actual like dust up or an actual like altercation in Suns Mavs. It was Durant and Urgitchin. Guess who? <laughs> Who was on the Mavs that would have gotten in a dust up with Kevin Durant, Kyrie, Grant? <laughs> oh, Grant! <laughs> I'll find the video. That's, that's why I love Grant. <laughs> He's something, man. Um. Anyways, Gordon Hayward literally cannot happen. The Celtics, yeah. um, tax paying teams or teams over the the apron cannot sign players that make more than the non taxpayer MLE, which is around a little over twelve mil. Um, meaning Gordon Hayward, who makes thirty something million. Cannot be signed by the Celtics in the buyout market. So it's literally not allowed. Yeah. You're seeing it everywhere on Twitter. You're seeing it in Reddit. And and, and no, stop. Cannot happen. Celtics cannot I mean, sign Gordon Hayward. This recently popped up again because of the Lowry trade. And people were like, yes, well, what if exactly. what him? And uh, he's another one. You can't get him. Exactly. exactly. Kelly Olenek also, sadly, no. Can't get him. No, I, I think Just Kelly's barely. I, I think Kelly falls into the yes, actually. Really? I'm going to double check. Yeah. It, Bill it's Simmons just and barely. Kevin O'Connor were talking about it, and they said no, but they could be wrong. I'm pretty sure. Or maybe me, I misheard them. Non-tax. I was eating my error. sandwich in the morning, so. <laughs> um, I need to double check how much the non-tax pair. Yeah, so the non-taxpayer MLE this season is 12.4. Oh, he's just underneath. 12.2, yes. So Kelly is a yes. I, however... Not going to get bought out. So it, that's not going to matter. Um, I was thinking about this but... <laughs> today, and this can be like the segue into this next part because I don't think, uh, no, it's not. What if, like, Ainge is like, let's do some favors? <laughs> but not with Kelly Linick. Like, I've I've been thinking about Chris Dunn. Like, I'm starting to think about him now. Mm. What if, like, what if he came off the bench? Who? Chris Dunn? Or yeah, Kelly like, Linick? what if they brought him in to come off the bench? Wouldn't complain. Wouldn't complain. People um, are raving also, about his defense. Chris Dunn's I don't, great. Yeah, I don't want to move past this too fast because I think this is something people should actually. I've care said about. Chris Dunn a million times. You I've, have I've said him up time no, no, and time no, you, again. You I've said, said it. it. I call him a C tier Alex Caruso in the kindest way possible because that's exactly what he'd be. He's a cheaper, you know, this version is not of a Alex slight Caruso. To you. Uh. Jack Jack has said Chris Dunn many a time, but yes, it's funny. It did initially start as like, what if they traded for Chris Dunn? And wink, wink, they buy out Kelly Olenek. <laughs> well, well, I don't hate that idea either. No, I like Chris Dunn. I think he'd be good, man. He's averaging 5, 3, and 4 in 18 minutes on 48, 38 splits. Per 36 minutes, he's averaging 9 assists a game. Like, he's really good. Are the per 36 minutes stats real? Well, it's just they just I know it multiply is. it. Yeah, it's just what I you know could what it is. Average in thirty six. But like, minutes. is yeah. that something we should care about? 
I think it's just a testament to he's averaging four assists in 18 minutes and it quantifies it a little bit easier for your brain to understand. I see. You know what I'm saying? Like four assists might not sound like a lot, but he's only playing 18 minutes a game. So if he was to play 36 minutes, it'd be nine, which is like, wow, <laughs> he's passing really well. This this summer, we need, to, we need to do like a greatest thir- per 36 guys of all time. Andre Drummond's got to be up there. Taco. Ta- <laughs> Our per 36 number is great. Let me see. Let's check him. At his one point, 36. they were nasty. Yeah, his rookie season, seven games, 25, 16, and four blocks. <laughs> yeah. He's playing up Wilt numbers. I think the, um, the what's it called? The garbage time per 36 are useless. But for guys who are playing like 10, 15 minutes a night. I see. Consistently. Uh, like for what it's worth, Jordan Walsh this year is averaging... 48 rebounds per 36 minutes. Yeah, he's putting he's better rebounding than Andre Drummond. Andre 100%. Drummond. Yeah. He's a beast. I wonder if that leads the league in per 36. It has to, right? It it has to. Probably, yeah. Say. That or There's somebody no like played like five seconds and got one. That'd be electric. That that would be very funny. Uh let's see. Per 36. Let me not hide that. Um oh, it's not letting me sort by that. Anyways, we can skip it. Um Okay, yeah, yes, Chris Gordon Dunn Hayward would is be no. a cool, cool guy. Do you think Chris Dunn would be cool? Because I don't think Utah's gonna sell, sadly. Mm. Do you think they move him, even if it's not to the Celtics? Probably not. He feels like a guy they can extend at a decent value to just play back a point guard for them. So I don't know, like, why would you bother selling him if he's playing this well? Like, I know and they're don't good have to if like you're you the said. Celtics. Would you trade Pritchard for him? No, 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 no. Just curious. I, I, I probably I, wouldn't I, I don't think so. <clears throat> yeah, he's on too good of a contract. Playing great basketball. Long. Yeah. And so, like, but that made me think today. I was like, what if you sold high on Pritchard? Mm, I suppose. But, like, but this is just not the time with the poison pill <laughs> thing. Like, you can't really no. get the most out of it. No, I don't think so either. Uh, but also, for what it's worth, just while we're calling crap out, it's just like garbage like this. Don't fall for this, please. Like, what are we doing? Like, what account is sources? This? It, 24 Celts. If this is like they're spewing nonsense on Twitter. Just don't be the people that is gr- is a growing possibility. It's he's he's literally just spamming 380,000 views. Yeah, I know. He's just you know how many idiots nonsense. that watch the Patriots saw this and got a fucking erection. Also, this guy's a moron. He's doubling down, adjusting our current cap level by making other moves before signing it if it's possible. Are you fucking stupid? This guy's a loser. I just people who do this shit, like get a life, man. Go get a job. Go outside. Is it That's technically grass. possible if they like offloaded a bunch of salary? No, no. One sec. What is the first apron? Because first in that case, they the they would have to like trade like Al Horford for free. Yeah, they'd or, have to trade or Horford of, yeah. or, or get rid of one of their top five guys or trade Pritchard, Cornette, Hauser. Shut the fuck up. Stop. It, it, it's not the I, NFL. You can't restructure your no. contracts. Touch grass, bro. Get a job. Go go do something with your life no touch anyway. that grass and figure out what you're talking about yeah. sit in front of the computer screen for five hours and learn loser all right uh, anyways that knows what they're talking about as i mentioned the title of this podcast is evaluating the wildest celtics tp trade ideas so we're going to go through some ideas that spawn from something sam put in this, and we're going to say how great. unlikely they are because they're 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 probably all very unlikely but we're going to go over them anyways and sort of squash some reddit dreams today that's what we're going to be doing so Kick it this off. has been a dog shit here. podcast in the best way. <laughs> yes. This is called and, the you know what? didn't have a game yesterday. <laughs> and you know what? People are going to click on it because you know what I'm going to do? It's going to have that title. I'm going to put Goga Batadze in the thumbnail. I'm going to put Jalen Smith in the thumbnail. We're just going to crap on it all and no, say not have put happening. Hayward too. Hey, yeah, Hayward's going to be in the Hayward thumbnail. We're thumbnail. Just shutting down stupid And if you click because things. of Hayward, it's your own fault. We don't feel bad. <laughs> Get fucked. You're part uh, of the problem. Even all right, though, so, thank you for watching <laughs> The first one, Sam, you put on here. It's in Ox Oxladl. I trust Oxlade. I trust. That's Oxlade, the right I trust. Um, he said, realistic trade for Goga Go- Go- Batadze. Only twenty minutes game for the Magic. Basically, bringing him up as a potential TPE trade idea. Now, first of all, no. And the reason why is they like him a lot in Orlando. From everything I've seen, everything I've read, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he's playing really well this season. They're also looking to trade potentially Wendell Carter Jr. Like he is on the block, which is like we like Goga that's basically. Well. Yeah, that's what you're that's what you're you're saying with that. Um, he's also like <laughs> I need to refine the numbers. 
his rim protection stats are like insane. Like he's been one of the best rim protectors in the league this year. He's on par in terms of defending shots within five feet with Anthony Davis and Avicii Zubac and Al Horford. It's pretty damn good company to be in. So I don't no, think that's they're looking why I was like, hmm. like I was like, huh? I wonder now. Yeah. I to my credit, first bullet point for me, I'm not really sure Orlando would be interested in giving yeah. him up. Because he has played enough minutes for them where it's like he's really a part of the team and they like him. So Mm -hmm. Jack's right. They're probably not going to trade him. But to the person that proposed this as a target, uh, salary, correct. This guy doesn't suck, correct. Team may not want him on the team anymore, incorrect. Also, for what it's worth, uh, I just did some quick digging. It does look like he has taken over the starting spot from Wendell Carter Jr. Or he uh, has started some games bump. over him. Um, yeah, however, bump his value. Last night, Wendell Carter Jr. was reinserted in. So it's 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 some back controversy. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. But it, I I doubt basically that he's going to you're going to make the call if you're Brad. <laughs> uh, I don't think they can't. Refuse. All right. Like... Um, <laughs> next Reddit user is Georgia for life. Uh, which is weird because I assume that would be the Goga one because Goga's from Georgia. However, no, um, he's from the country Georgia. This guy is probably like Rip Uga Go Dogs. I know, but what I'm saying <laughs> is it could also be Georgia. I just it was a You're joke. You're not gonna say Rip Uga. Yeah. What is what is that's that the that is. Georgia mascot? That's a bulldog. It died. Oh, did he pass away? <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't yeah. know that. <clears throat> Rip Uga. There you go. I was like, I was, I was like, that, is he still bad. not going to say it? <laughs> um, <laughs> what a fucking mess this podcast. <laughs> this is why you come to us. Nobody else is sitting here talking about Uga on, on the Celtics podcast. If you're not in your car dying laughing right now, then I don't know what to tell you. This Make is sure the you best keep your eyes open, though. Don't, don't laugh too hard. <laughs> Because then you'll be on the rat list because you caused a traffic accident in the morning rush hour. In the- <laughs> <laughs> um, next guy. So he, he wrote a post, top four trade targets before free agency deadline. Uh, he went two for four. I'll give him credit in, in terms of realism. First one is Jalen Smith. The Pacers aren't trading Jalen Smith. This is one of the whiffs. Although, again... Yeah credit to Georgia for life for the due diligence does fit the TPE. However, he's averaging 10.5 points, 5.5 rebounds, 1.1 or 10.4 points, 1.1 assists on 63 50 splits the season while taking over two threes a game. Doesn't seem like guy the Pacers are, are itching to get rid of. He's also starting for them lately, I believe. Um, or he was back and forth, but yeah, but he's been very good. The TPE like type players, anybody that you're like, Ooh, that would be exciting. The other team doesn't want to give up because they're making yeah. nothing and giving them something, which is great value. The reason why you make yeah. trades is not to get rid of pieces like that. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, next one he put in Dario Saric again. W money correct is technically eligible. Unfortunately, ten and a half, five and a half, two and a half, forty-eight, forty splits. The Warriors aren't going to get rid of him. And you could say, oh, well, the Warriors stink. Maybe they'll sell. They have no reason to sell. They don't have their yeah. pick. You can't blow it up with Steph Curry on the team. If they trade Steph Curry, and then sure, may- maybe they'll trade Jadarius Arch, but it- not going to happen. <laughs> it's just, it's not going to get It's all calm down a minute. I don't need Steph Curry coming to this conference. <laughs> Top, you know, two weeks in a row of us discussing Steph Curry trades on the podcast. <laughs> We're ahead of the curve. We had it first. <clears throat> this we did. Yeah, no, Darius are Derek been White first. Great for them. What do we have? The, what Derek time for me to get first? a billion texts now? We're what do we have for about, Derek White uh, first? What do you what, say? What Derek White thing do we have first? What are you talking about? No, no, I said it's time for me to get a million text messages. <clears throat> mm. uh, also, video uh, of Grant Williams intermission. Grant Williams messing with Nurkic. Pull and it up. Show. Should we watch? Uh, the comment here, Grant Williams, fake tough guy, stepping over Grant. Nurkic comes in, pushes Williams. This is going to be all time. Let's take a look. I'm not going to put the sound on, but uh, let's, let me let me see here. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not love Grant, though? <clears throat> He's such a good, like, instigator. Grant, also, Grant this reminds is a- me of, like, people i used to work with at the news station the ba- the like the greatest thing about the news station was everybody had like a thing about them uh, but it was dialed up all the way to 10 no matter what grant is like the goofy weird fake tough guy but 
turned all the way up. So oh, this also for trait. Also, for what it's worth, garbage flop from Durant. Tech, two thousand dollar fine. Let's see. This, this is Let's awful. Grant replay. barely bumps him, and he just goes flying. This is the loser. Let's look see. at this. Ready? <sighs> Say what you want, Durant. Not a very uh, built up man. <laughs> yeah, also true. There's not much to him. <laughs> just look. Why well, Grant's just standing over him? What? You, come on, brother. What Jack? What's more with? believable, this or Grant falling down after hitting Jalen? Uh <laughs> I think this was more of a flop than than Grant's. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I just ruined. Gra- <laughs> I just ruined it. Gra- <laughs> Grant intermission over. Um, okay. Dario Sarge, Tory no. Jalen Smith, no. Tory Craig, Craig. Tory Craig, possible. Uh, however, he's not going to play again until like March. So, like, that's okay. At that point, I guess. Yeah. Uh, in the 27 games he played this season, six points, five rebounds, 42 from the field, 38 from three on mostly threes uh, or over half his shots for threes. So, fine. Um, Plus, he'd be a free that, guy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's not like you have to pull pieces away to bring him in. It's There's almost no risk to this. Brad has yeah. a zillion second round picks so he can make moves like this one and not mm-hmm. feel like he's breaking the bank. So if they if you yeah. got a Woj notification tomorrow, like you should not be like, ah, like, I can't believe they did this. He's injured. Why would they do that? Yeah. Also, for what it's worth, um, guy with deep playoff experience, like at the very least, like he's been to the finals before. He was in the Suns, yeah. the Suns team. <clears throat> yeah. 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 So he's been he's been there. Um, last guy was Najee Marshall, which is a guy we've talked about before um, with Bobby Kravitsky on talking C's averaging 7.7 points, 3.6 rebounds two assists, 45, 39 splits on just over two threes game. Fine player, solid hustle guy, nicknamed the knife for what it's worth. It's uh, knife. So if, if we're grading them on nicknames, probably the best Tory Craig doesn't have any listed. Dario Saric is the best. I lied. Uh, Jalen Smith is sticks and logs and Dario Saric, the homie is one nickname, uh, super Dario. And then I'm, I want to pronounce this part. Shishi. I don't know how to say this. It's got like, which one, one was the one that like made culture. you like be like, he has the best one. The homie, the homie. The homie's fire. Super Dario is also sick. Super. I like, think super the knife Mar- is yeah, funnier. Yeah. The knife is good. Lie. I will say I was at the Celtics Pelicans game. I'll be last there next season. Week. Are you going to be there? Uh, probably yeah. <laughs> hopefully um and some guy just brought a giant poster of a knife and had him sign it it was crazy it was just like what the fuck are we doing here i kind of want to uh, do that it was it I was cool and he oh, the it. says no, no pictures no, no, or autographs no, no. Najee marshall did sign it to his credit but yeah uh tory craig Najee marshall sure jalen smith Dar- darius arch no last one here was Academic toned 5484 brought up the idea of Io Desunmu. I think I've mentioned Io Desunmu in the past. I just Too don't think money. the Bulls are gonna. No, no, he's under no? the TP. Um, I no, he he's on a rookie. Million. <clears throat> I just makes, year? yeah, actually, he makes 6.4 this year, so that might be just over, but oh, I think it's just over two, perhaps. I don't think so, though. He signed a three year contract this summer. So I don't, I think he's, I, I'm not sure. I don't think it, it wasn't an extension. So I don't know if Poison Pill. He signed an extension. I just assume he just signed three years. Oh, he it wasn't just signed. an extension. Yeah. Cause oh, his, okay, his okay, deal okay, was okay, up. So they re-signed him. Um, you're probably thinking of Kobe White who makes 12 million next year. That's what I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. But I had assumed who, I don't think they'll trade him. He's playing like 23 minutes for them this year, averaging around roughly nine, two and a half and two, 48, 37 splits. Remember when he just made like 13 of 15 threes against the Celtics to start his career? Yep. yep. And then he slowed down. But for what it's worth, also, the Bulls are in this weird spot where they don't really want to tank and they don't really, but they kind of want to compete, but they kind of want to sell assets. Regardless of what you think they should do, I would assume he's probably not a guy they trade because he's good enough to help them compete, but he's young enough to also probably be a part of plans if they want to tear it down. So, like, that also just doesn't make the most sense from that perspective. So, mm. um, but shutting down some, some ideas, particularly had to go with the, the Hayward and Goga, unfortunately, probably is probably not going to get traded. Same thing with Jalen yeah, Smith. And of Gordon Hayward. So is Jared. <laughs> it's just Jared. Uh... The commenter Jared who hates. Oh, Jared. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Respect. Also, other guy. Wait, hold up. What you other... should not hate Gordon Hayward. If, if, 
From a Celtics perspective, you should not. From a basketball player perspective, no. But I like Jared has other beef with him. I think. Um, Guy needs other... child's birth to play in the Cubs. <laughs> give him a break. Other potential buyout guys that the Celtics couldn't get that we're inevitably going to see people talk about. What do we think? I'm just doing a quick comb. Lowry. Spencer Dinwiddie, Lowry, Dinwiddie, both no, can't get. Sorry. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Tobias Harris, if he's traded and way in bought out, nope. Sorry. No, I don't think so either, but like if something happens. Um, hmm. Let's see. Joe Harris, traded Bruce and Brown. Nope. Bruce Even Brown, if he's not nope. waived. Yep. Joe Harris, Buddy Heald, Bruce Brown, all no. Um, Marcus Morris, no. Uh, Marcus that's Morris probably, will be fun. <laughs> I know. that, And that's probably one that could potentially like happen in terms of getting bought out if he's traded. Yeah. Um, Doug McDermott, no. Gary Harris, no. Everything else. In terms of one-year deals, yes. Yeah. Kelly Olenek, yes. James Wiseman, yes. Uh, if it happens, <laughs> Robert Covington, yes. That's actually not one that I would hate. If he it's hard to out. be like I would take James Wiseman because the man was not good with Golden State because he didn't get <laughs> run, and he's gotten an opportunity with Detroit and it's still been ass. <clears throat> but like something about being the number two overall pick is just like you got so, yeah I have something yeah. there right like you gotta have it's something. like when they brought in Jabari Parker who was not yeah. bad to his credit like I will never let someone be like Jabari Parker was not good when he's on the Celtics so like, he was fine he did what they needed yeah, he was fine he just couldn't really defend but like when they got it, it was like what if he finds it what if he figures it out <laughs> what if his knee surgeries don't matter. <laughs> What if you figure it out 20 years later? Uh, I would take uh, Robert Covington for what it's worth. You laugh at figuring it out uh, like years later. Kobe or Cody Martin just two weeks figured it out in the fucking spring. Yeah, but it, that wasn't it wasn't like he was in the league for 10 years left and then came back. It was like two it's years like in second team. Yeah, but he was only in the league for like. <laughs> two years prior it's not like he was in the league forever Regardless. the hornets are just hornets are just bad <laughs> clearly <laughs> anyways um that's about it for that uh we I mean, can chris john you could point at is like a i don't think he gets out caught guy. out i no, no. yeah sure that's an example dante exam too in dallas this year has been better yeah um but, good for them and by the way. i think Jamari Parker would have been fine as a role player. The Celtics just had better options. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, that's just kind of what it came down to. Getting um, talks to Barcelona. First international trade. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there's nobody that I don't want on this team. Like, I don't like, and I would be, like, get ready to go. Nah, he's fine. Okay. <clears throat> gotcha. Like, get ready to learn it, like Spanish. if there's going to be an international <laughs> trade, like, I want to be able to be like, good. I'm Send this guy, guy out of here. Fucked. Okay. Yeah. I see. I see. All right. Um, Let's jump on over to the email here, see what y'all got cooking. But first, we let's give away any, some popcorn. popcorn. Popcorn time in Pop Nito. Let's see who's Did winning. We get now, any people today? now, we had one last time. We have a 1v1 this time. A duel, something. <laughs> a duel for popcorn. <laughs> comment. We got to start saying it at the start of the episode again so people know. Yeah, um, I think so. Comment what's popping on this video for a chance to win a $10 gift card to win Pop Nito. Uh, but this time around, two entries, Manny versus Christian. Let's see who's getting themselves some popcorn. Who will win today? We just We've be got... scumbags and like put me on the wheel every single time. <laughs> <laughs> Sam gets a chance. Christian! Congrats. Christian already won. I swear to God, Christian, you're getting banned if you already won. <laughs> maybe maybe he's entered before. Let me see. We got to go to the VAR. Has we're Christian won review. before? Oh, shit. I don't think... That name, maybe he's emailed us. I don't know. The name pops out to me. I'm get. I search Christian. I like control F in Google Dots. I'm getting a bunch of Christian Wood trade ideas from a year ago that I wrote. This okay. is a disaster. Well, you're probably well, no, no, no. I, I have, I have. Um, what's it called? I have uh, entries. Let me see if we bolded him on any of these. I think this was pre in Pop Nito, so no there. Let's see. This is a. I mean, the the podcast is already shit, so you guys are just gonna deal with me looking in here we didn't list it there uh just get, get ready to listen to jack go through the comments he has entered before but he didn't win that one i have two more to check my computer's moving slow because i just opened six tabs at once uh all no right. has not won christian wins. all right yeah. as far as i know and christian if you have one be honest with us don't don't scam uh, we're gonna find out regardless <clears throat> they're gonna be like no dual winners remember true 
True. Anyways, congrats to Christian. You know what to do. Email us at hbtcpod at gmail.com with your name and phone number. We'll get you hooked up with a $10 gift card to Inpop Nito. But let's go to the email. We do have three. Uh, We got... Uh, We got uh, RJ with the email. What's popping? People were happier to see Kyrie. Evening, guys. Is it me or to some Celtics players not like Grant? I usually don't try to guess what's going on in the players' heads, but JT seemed like uh, G. Will kicked Deuce's puppy. I wonder how he managed to piss people off so much. I mean, seriously, what'd he do? Looks like Luke's trying to make his tip-in game a thing, which I think is a great idea with how much difficulty he has grabbing rebounds and aren't bouncing right to him. But I hope he puts in the reps to make it a reliable component, not just a hope and prayer. Um, <clears throat> this is about the Mavs game, I believe. Yes. I was impressed with Pritchard's defense tonight. He didn't let either Luca or Kyrie let him up and contributed to a tidy 5-7-6 uh, stat line in 24 minutes, even threw in a block and a steal. We're hitting the grind uh, where everyone has seen film on everybody else, and now talent alone isn't going to propel you to victory. Playing well together and trusting in your teammates to do their part is what can separate the Celtics from the crowd. That's why I don't think the Celtics are uh, that big on finding an extra body from outside at the trade deadline. Be well, RJ, for what it's worth, before we discuss, JT and Grant did like hug and like, have a happy after the game moment. So I don't I don't think they dislike each other, but they they have a relationship with Grant <clears throat> like you would with your little brother. Yeah, they fuck with him. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like I don't think and I, I'm him. all for it. Yeah. Okay. I don't think they dislike him. I just think I do wish they yeah. just treated Kyrie like that, but genuinely mm. felt that way. Sam the Pistons are winning. Sorry, I just have the score. My right. dad called it. He was like, <laughs> they might win today. And I was like, good. They're up by four with 30 seconds left. Anyways, um, all the other points I agree with. Pritchard was good. Uh, I think that could contribute the chemistry thing to maybe not making a deal at the deadline. And then we talked about Luke's tap outs on the last um, pod. Anyways, all right. <clears throat> Next email from RJ again. What's popping? Tuesday NBA silliness. Afternoon, guys. NBA news is definite Celtics feel, even though the Seas haven't done anything. The right. Heat swap out. Kyle Lowry for Terry three sticks, which is what is Terry three sticks? Do I not? Am I throw up the three? <clears throat> huh? He would throw up the three. Like this. Oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> which is an annoyingly good move by Miami in that they didn't give up a lot for a useful guard. When does La- when does Lowry's shriveled husk announce its retirement from the league after being drained of all useful basketball energy? It's facts. Worth. He'll free probably guy. sign to a contender. Yeah, he'll probably sign to somebody. <clears throat> no, like he got a free guy. He oh, yeah, sure. Guy. Giannis clearly wants to be more LeBron than LeBron, managing to get Adrian Griffin fired after a 30 and 13 start. Uh, also, for what it's worth, apparently the GM didn't consult Giannis before he did it. He like talked to the players about it in in grand briefly, but we'll get into that. No word on the Bucks equipment manager, so I'm guessing he got his shit together. And a potential solution to help guide the team that features a legendary big man in an offense. First All Star guard to the promised land is. Doc Rivers, <laughs> because he made him beat and hard and work so well together. Dear Bucks equipment manager, keep that resume updated. So maybe I've been. Do you want to talk first? Yeah, I figured we would because these are all kind of different topics. So we would sure quickly go through them. Uh, as far as Doc, hmm. is there Hilarious. like other are there other guys out there that you would be like, yeah, go ahead, just show up halfway through the season, it'll go okay. Uh, Seriously, like Doc has the and I I, I get it. I get Doc has not been good in the playoffs. But, like, also, he's showing up in January, almost February. Who, who are you going to sign up? Who's going to get the job done for you? It's a valid question. Um, and Dwayne also, maybe Casey. Adrian Griffin was the equipment manager, too. I don't hate Dwayne Casey. Uh, he's like the GM of the Pistons. He's still involved with them, I think. He just took a step back from coaching. Oh, is he? Pretty sure. <clears throat> You're probably right. Oh, yeah. Before transitioning to a front office position. Yeah. I wonder. I don't know if there's a way I can look at, like, coaches that are free agents right now. Free agent coaches. Take. Yeah. Mike D'Antoni. I guess. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just, I'm just like, trying to name coaches who are. Uh, uh, what about David Blatt? <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, five NBA coaches who can replay, replace him. Let's see this article from Sports Kita. Mike Budenholz are on the list. That that would be the funniest thing in in the world, right? You know, that that would be that. <clears throat> the best. Um, Terry Stotts. That would be funnier. That would somehow be funnier. Who wrote this? Uh, this is Sports Kita. This is no. The, but is there like a name on it? Uh, Evan Bell. 
You gotta give him credit. Evan Bell, Beast. good good punchlines on this one. Here. <clears throat> Who's uh, next? Joe, Joe Prunty, who is the yep. current interim. Uh, Mike D'Antoni, and the number one Doc Rivers is also on the list. Yeah, this is all time. That's 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 phenomenal. <clears throat> that's good stuff. I do wonder if they would have been better off. Remember a couple years ago, or more than a couple years ago at this point, when the Timberwolves poached Chris Finch as an assistant midseason? No, I didn't know that's so how that happened. Ryan Saunders, who was the coach, got right. fired, and then Chris Finch left the Raptors coaching staff to join Toronto midseason. Oh. So, like, from that perspective, Sam Cassell, Charles Lee, not saying... Yeah, but if you're the Celtics, you're saying, Celtics. no, you can't have them. You can also, also true. That. <clears throat> also true. Um, but I'm saying there could have been other guys around today. the league. I was like, huh, I bet yeah. they wish like they didn't let Charles Lee walk. He was a part of their staff. I'm like, oh, like what if they tried to get him back? And I was like, well, Brad would be like, no, can't have him. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. Agree. Definitely. Um, Verbatim. <laughs> what, what if uh, <laughs> Monty Williams just leaves the Pistons <laughs> mid-season? He probably back. wishes he could, dude. He's probably I like, know. fuck, I should have held out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would have been all time. Anyways, uh, all right, finish it up. <laughs> very funny. Yeah, last thing. Maybe I've been too harsh on Celtic Twitter for dissing Coach Missoula and trying to make Nimi versus Luca uh steel cage match. Uh, all we had today was folks giving Drew Carter grief about how to pronounce GIF correctly. I Boston started that mellowing. <laughs> Sorry, I hope no one spit up on their monitor on that last one. Be well, RJ. Yeah, Drew Carter's got to be taught a lesson here. This is unacceptable behavior. And th- the worst part is, and I know you tweeted about it too, but we tweeted about it at the same time. At least teach, like, don't teach Scal wrong. He doesn't know any better. Come on. You can't tell it. Like, uh, the, uh, Scal said Scal's Jeff, often wrong, to... though. It's, it's on brand. <clears throat> Whack. Drew Carter, get it together. Uh, unacceptable. Pronounce it right. Also, uh, I saw Jared Zero on Twitter made a good point. It's called like a graphics interchangeable something something. It's not graphics, is it? Is graphics spelt with the J, Drew? No. Crap. Garbage. Anyways, um, <clears throat> last email we got from the birthday boy, Philip. Uh, subject line band aids. Happy, happy, hey, fellas. Birthday. <laughs> no, <to> no. <laughs> hey, fellas, another day, another birthday. Thanks for the gift of content. I hate to complain about complainers, but here we go. Uh, Sam will love this. I don't know what it's about, but <clears throat> that sounds like up sands out. Uh, <sighs> this is not an original take, but can we get rid of the two minute report and coach's challenge? Uh, these are both mere band aids on the NBA's refing problem. Neither has improved the product, but both has opened a window into the perpetual whining and focus on referees. The coaches, I'm going to read the whole thing that we can talk yep. about. It. The coaches challenge has created a new annoying thing that diva players can focus on after every call. When players twirl their fingers, I cringe because either the game is about to come to a screeching halt or the player is using the gesture to pat their ego after a foul. We even have a sign staffed eagle eyeing replays for this purpose, purpose, which is sad. Maybe if it was only allowed in the last two minutes, I'd be more accepting. But the fact that it can occur at any play and to possibly be done twice per coach is just bad for spectators. Too much whining uh, and it does very little in the scope of the game to correct the refing problem. The two minute reports are perhaps even worse. The NBA reviews entire games for refing accuracy behind closed doors, but publicizing the last two minutes they allow, by publicizing the last two minutes they're allowing fan bases and teams to feel cheated no one knows if the refing was ultimately fair across the whole game they only know how the last two minutes went even then the nba just seems to decide when they want to admit mistakes and when they double down it's like they mock trial for refs where uh the referees are the jury total bs now it has become insufferable whiny part of the news cycle too <clears throat> great for videos though that's really good for videos. Uh, if the NBA wants to improve refereeing, add a uh, add a friggin' referee. It's not rocket science here. Stop with the gimmicks that promote culture of complaining and disrespect. Thanks for the soapbox, best Phil. Okay, um, I have you no problem with. Uh, I mean, we we can say time. I, I, coach's challenge. First off, I have no problem with it. I, I think it's a pretty standard thing across sports now. Like most sports have a challenge. Baseball has it. Football has it. Basketball now has it. <clears throat> also, my thing is. Refereeing is very hard. Like it is a very difficult thing to be on it at all times. And so I think it it is. uh, I used to umpire, but I never um, refed. Did you ref ever? For a little bit. Yeah. Not fun. It's tough. It's tough. And so I think it is fair to give coaches these opportunities to switch calls and and get things correct because the reality of his refs are humans. And so they're not going to be able to do it all the time. So I have no problem with the coaches' challenge. Uh, I kind of agree with the last two minute report thing is kind of useless and just gives fans a reason to complain. However, like I, I don't really care. It's whatever you can put it out, but I'll let you give your thoughts. Coach's challenge. Coach's <clears throat> challenge. Good. 
Coach is challenging knowing when it hurts the Celtics, but good. It's still good. And before they had the coach's challenge, all people did was bitch that they wanted the coach's challenge. Also, not to cut you off, it used to be a lot worse. You remember a couple seasons ago when every yeah, single fucking play everything. in the last two minutes? That was unacceptable. So I think, if anything, the coach's challenge made that a lot better. So Yeah, they just streamlined it. It's like, yeah. that. that's an excellent counterpoint to what he's saying, because Phil just says, like, it, it ruins the spectator experience. Which, is which I mean, also fair, to each Phil. their own. Like, Phil's sure. Work, yeah. I, I can understand that to an extent, too. As far as last two minute report goes, first and foremost, they should not share it. They just shouldn't. However, they do share it to hold the officials accountable and they will get shit on if the calls are wrong. It's like Mm -hmm. essentially like when the dog pees on the carpet and you shove the dog's face in it. Not that you should do that, (laughs) but it's kind of what they're doing to the refs. Now, to the rest of the game could be completely unfair. No, because the last two minute report, that thing is done for the whole game. We just don't all get to see it like Mm -hmm. they have reviews of how the officials did how how their calls went they are still held accountable behind the scenes for that but we all don't get to see it which is good because nobody needs to have that responsibility to look through all of it unless you're part of the referees association or whatever they're called so yeah um Mm -hmm. but you don't need it you don't need to see it you're right like it just makes people mad also found out today did you know that um miami in atlanta played a game like the last 50 seconds of it over again because a long time ago right yeah it was like in 2008 yeah. al horford yeah. was actually in the game mm. i found that out today it was a shack thing right because he was supposed to foul out or something like yeah, that. yeah he was supposed to foul out or he didn't foul out but they said he fouled out so it's miami was like it. that's bullshit and then by the time that the game happened they had traded shack <laughs> did it change did the heat end up winning the game no there were no points scored <laughs> well did you know that something similar is happening right now or the the blazers are um that's why uh i think i saw it today yeah the blazers are filing a protest because they said that chauncey billups called a timeout and the refs didn't give it to him shouldn't they be like for that like shouldn't they shouldn't they be pro like we lost what do you mean they're tanking they should just also be, like, true pro, well, we lost like yes but <laughs> The the team isn't tanking. The organization is tanking. You know what I'm saying? Like teams Who don't submits take the request. Also, also true. <laughs> <laughs> it's also fair. Um, but they don't they don't want to give off the that they is a tough talk is on the bottom. They said please ignore this, but we had to well, say yeah, we did. If the players and coaches are coming to you complaining, like you're not going to say no, we're tanking. Fuck you, because that would that, that'd create like an Evan Turner thing where he was like, "What am I supposed to do here in Philly? Like this sucks. I don't want to be here, right?" Because you do want to create a culture. Just crying, you know, <laughs> his glasses are all fogged up. Who? Who would you say? Scoot, Scoot Henderson. Oh man, what a guy. Scoot Henderson has struggled a lot this season, but I'm pretty sure he's played a lot better. I think he's like... finding his footing a bit. Yeah, I almost yeah. put like a rookie check in on this sheet, but we can save it. There's yeah, going to be can... a time in where we're more in need than. Uh, the uh terry rogier doc rivers movement day i agree speaking of that let's go to the nba section here um we can start with the nba standings check and then we'll get into that news obviously there we have to talk about but first excuse me let's check around the league i know you are i got you let's check around the league see who has been winning games who has been losing games who is moving up in the world? Who is moving down? And have the Pistons won a game? I actually haven't checked to see if they blew it in the last 30 seconds, but we can take a look. Let me, let me, we'll start with there. Did the Pistons blow this game or did they win? Pistons score. I think they won. <clears throat> they did win. Seven yes! point win for the Pistons. Uh, it. Who led the way for them? Let me see. It Kate's wasn't fact. Out. He's not back yet. Right? Bojan Bogdanovic dropped 34. Yeah, no case. He's like not a bad player. <clears throat> no, he's really good. <laughs> he's legitimately like a good player. <clears throat> he's very good. Um, what the hell? I'm sorry. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Is PJ Washington going by a different name now? Because why, why did Google do this? Why is he listed in the box score under his full government name? What is it? Paul Jermaine Washington Jr. What do, why is it? It's, it's it, did he change it now? Is he trying to go by Paul? He wants Honestly, people to take him more seriously. I would kind of be in for, do for we Paul have name Washington. change splits? Uh, name change was oh, you know what confused me on the broadcast. I'm going to tangents now. <clears throat> Nate Williams on the Rockets. Remember, Drew Carter was talking about him. he changed to what he goes by. Did you know this? Because I was like, Who the hell is this? I've never heard mm-hmm. of Nate Williams. I looked it up, he wasn't there. 
his name before that, or he changed it to his name is Jonathan Williams. Like instead of Jonathan, like Gene, G E E N, Ethan Williams. And Where he's changed it now to Nate. Is that his middle name? <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> you know, Ray I, Allen is, I think is so, actually yes. Walter. <clears throat> yeah. But Ray is his middle name. Steph Curry, yeah. Wardell. So yeah, Nate Williams just changed it because I mean, if your name was Jonathan, yeah, the uh, maybe uh, he's pretty much George Costanza, where he wants everyone to call him T Bone. That one Seinfeld episode, which you've never seen, but there is a Seinfeld where George is like, "Yo, I just want everyone to call me T Bone because it sounds you, cool." You said T Bone, and I thought of iCarly. So that's oh, that's the yeah, that's the guy that runs uh the the smoothie shop, yeah, or bagel T-Bow. shop. He, he was, was fine. I think it's both. Tebow was sick. Yeah. Shout out to Tebow. Where's Tebow now? Is this a cameo from Tebow? I bet. No, it's a TikTok from. Ke- Hold up. We're going off the rails. This is Jack Cooley esque. Let's see. What's that? 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 I have no idea. I didn't watch it. I, but anyways, NBA. Let's see who's winning and losing. We're, <clears throat> we're crazy. So the top five of the East is all winning. Two wins for the Celtics. Two wins for the Bucks. Six out. in a row. Six, six in a row for the Sixers. Eight in a row for the Cavs. Four in a row for the Knicks. Now, uh, addendum to that. I don't know if I'm using that word right, but we're gonna rock with it. 76ers schedule as they've won six in a row. Let's check the validity. VAR. Um, start. Uh, you know, fair enough. Kings, Rockets, Nuggets. Uh, Magic Hornets Spurs. So it trailed off at the end, but yeah, it's not too bad. It's not the Cavs. <clears throat> yeah. Meanwhile, Cleveland's eight in a row uh, consists of Wizards, Wizards, Spurs, Nets, Bulls, Bucks without Giannis, Hawks, Magic. So yeah. Uh, and in that Magic game, Sam Merrill led them in scoring. Sam, do you know who that is? <laughs> My dad, I do know who that is only because <laughs> okay. there's a comedian called Sam Morell. Okay. <laughs> uh, My dad just texted me pissing's one. <clears throat> Yeah, let's go. Uh, meanwhile, uh, <laughs> they haven't tweeted the final score yet. Sam, you're going to find this interesting. This hasn't updated yet. Out of the top five teams in the East, the Pistons are now the only Eastern Conference team with a winning streak. <laughs> Pistons, one minute ago, hungry for more with the final score. <laughs> I bet you are. They, they need to change it. They're fucking starving. <laughs> They're not hungry. I'm stealing that. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, yeah, all losses across the board in terms of losing streaks. Heat Pacers, three-game losing streaks. Pacers can't win with Siakam just yet. Uh, and the Pistons, she beat the Hornets to flip that. Um, but anyways, East, that's, that's what the East is. Um, out West, three in a row for the Thunder Nuggets Clippers. Timberwolves have now lost two in a row. They're still in uh, tied for first. The Thunder have caught them. Actually, in terms of winning percentage, uh, Thunder Timberwolves Nuggets are technically a three game tie for first or a three way tie for first right now. It's just the Nuggets have one more win and one more loss at mm. 31 and 14 and the Thunder and Timberwolves are both 30 and 13. Um, top of the West is also winning, though. Uh, Pelicans, Suns, Kings have won one in a row for the Kings and the Pelicans. Suns have won six in a row. They're rolling. Finally, find back their footing. Mm-hmm. Also, you see KD a- make fun of the guy the other day on Twitter. No. The guy was like, so when we did the thing about Katie being in the goat conversation, is this the guy who was like, oh, LeBron didn't join this? That yes. guy, like, with yeah. the cupcake. Yeah, I saw the tweet. Yeah, and, and Katie was like, fuck you. Like, I can talk to anyone about basketball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, people don't like that he does that, but like, I have a ton of respect I love for it. KD because yeah, he yeah. just goes on there and rips people. I also think it's funny as fuck. Do you care murders. about what we all have to say for him? Yeah. Because he, he's got a phone. He can fucking yeah. clown you if he wants to. He's a, he's a person. Come on, guys. Like, what the fuck? It's just, anyways, uh, I will say <clears throat> something notable. You are seeing the clear splits in top of the West and East versus bottom of the West. If you look at the win loss column, a lot of W streaks at the top, a lot of losses at the bottom for both of them. <laughs> like you, you're seeing the separation start to form. Um, but that's what's going around it, uh, going on around the league. Excuse me, Jazz have slowed down only six and four in their last ten. Now lost three. That's in good a row. for us. Uh, not good for the Lakers though, because or not good for us in terms of Lakers, because the Lakers are now past them again in the ninth seed <clears throat> in the playing tournament. It's good for us until they <laughs> don't trade Chris down to the Celtics and they trade him somewhere else that I would not want him to go. Like mm. I don't know the Lakers <laughs> or Philly or like Milwaukee. Milwaukee. <laughs> I will say in terms of Dario Saric, Milwaukee, one hundred percent. Please be if serious, the, um, Danny. If the uh, you have a you have a job to do. 
if the Warriors keep losing and they try to do a three team trade or something like that, like you could maybe see Dario use his matching salary. Then you go, well, I'm not going to completely count it out. And I, for what it's worth, Dario, very good, would be like the perfect Celtics guy. Anyways, <clears throat> um, what makes you say that? He's a big, ma- big guy, defends at an okay level. Uh, oh, fuck you. I didn't even, I see your brain's fucked. I didn't even realize what you're doing. He shoots the ball well. He, whatever. Well, let's move on. <laughs> Speaking of uh, <laughs> former Celtics guy, Terry Rozier got traded to the Heat. We've mentioned it, oh, talked man. about it briefly. Uh, break down the trade. Got traded for Kyle Lowry and a, I believe, t- lottery-protected 2027 first-round pick. I'm going to fact-check myself there, but I think it was 2027. Um, 2027 first-rounder. Yeah. It's protected, unprotected, lottery protected. Yep, lottery-protected per Jake Fisher, I believe, tweeted that out. Um, like Sam said, pretty free guy. I, my, my Buddies of mine texted me. You know, how did, you know, why didn't the Hornets try to get more? Maybe you could have gotten more. However, how many teams are looking for score first ball dominant guards? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like there aren't a ton of teams that would. You know who loved him? Hmm. Lakers. Sure. But I think they'd rather set their sights a little higher on like DeJounte Murray or Malcolm Brogdon. Who would be better fit? Oh, Lakers. Why stop there? Well, they're gonna get Levine and DeRozan and MD. Do you know what I'm saying though? Like, I, yeah. I, there's just not a lot of teams. Like, that's not where a lot of teams want to put their asset chips into. And the Heat were like, "We will," because that's it's somebody enough. who can help us out. And so I feel like that's why the price was what it was. Also, as as potentially easy as it is to get up to that salary mark, the Heat had a very clear way to get there in Kyle Lowry. So, um, but yeah, uh, very annoying for the Celtics because you know if they play the Heat, Terry's gonna have a 30 point game. It's gonna be annoying. <laughs> So, well, yeah, not if when tomorrow. It's true. The Celtics will see the Heat tonight, as you guys are listening to this. Yep. Um, but... Just another fucking free guy, dude. E- every fucking time, <laughs> just free guys. Celtics got one free guy. And it was Evan Fournier. Mm. That was like they the lost. one time they got a free guy, and that was awful. Know. That was he, super he like joined too. the Celtics and could not make any threes. Mm. Anytime Fournier has played the Celtics before, or after he played here, he's just lit them up. He joins the team and he's just ass. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. But Terry, I mean, from an unbiased perspective, like that's a no brainer. Like, like that's a no. you do that trade. Like, good like, trade. Yeah, he, good trade. Like Terry's playing great. Free guy. Free guy trade is always a good trade. <laughs> he came off the bench for them. He, I mean, Terry's like more than a free guy. He's a free like. There was some. If the if the Hornets had like five, seven more wins, he'd be in all star conversations. He's averaging 23, 4, and 6.5 and on 46, 36 splits. Like, he's damn good this year. Yeah, and that's just, like, playing on an ass team where, like, you're getting attention. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And he made his debut for the Heat tonight as we're recording this. Um, they're losing to the Grizzlies right now. <laughs> then uh, the Pacers just fucked their season by making trades. Yeah. Pacers 0-3 um, since the trade. Terry Rozier has seven points on two of eight shooting off the bench. So maybe not the best debut. We're back. Uh, <laughs> anyways um one, also one half of basketball we're back <laughs> also returning or not returning i guess because it's in miami but playing the celtics josh richardson former celtic uh will be there respect well. respect uh, to him. he's one of my favorite like short celtics guys you are big he's on here him. For he's a good player season. like the he's a good player when he's here uh next thing we got the bucks are in shambles this is this had is this the most surprising thing news of the season it has to be right yes and no because, like, now that it's come out, people are like, well, what about this? What about that? Like, all these things were pointing to this. Uh, yeah, but, like, happened. I, I didn't also, think it would actually happen. <laughs> not for nothing. Like, we had this conversation a pot or two ago. We were talking about the Bucks being in on DeJounte Murray. And I was like, as a Celtics fan, you should be like, huh. Like, something's going on over there where, like, yeah. they're not happy with what they have. You see Did the Bucks were uh... anything to do with the coach? No. But you the see... team wasn't playing well. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, you see the Bucks were dancing pregame today. They're like in a little circle dancing around, and someone retweeted it. Imagine you hear the your Adrian Griffin. You see the team literally dancing on your grave. <laughs> He's just Tim Robinson in the courtroom with the hat. Poor guy. Um, but yeah, Adrian Griffin got fired. Um, it was born out a month. This is from the Athletic. Uh, it was born out of months of underwhelming play with an internal concerns growing about the severe decline of their once elite defense, the flawed use of newcomer Damian Lillard alongside franchise centerpiece Giannis Antetokounmpo, and a widespread fear that this group, which was widely expected to contend for a title, was likely to fall short if Milwaukee stood pat. A um, lot of stuff going on. Now they're going to hire Doc Rivers, so another you know former Celtics coach. Um, 
apparently was acting as a consultant for Griffin, which is just like it hilarious. Because <laughs> it, it's not well. funny because he well, it is funny because he took his job. But like I listened to Bill Simmons pod like quite a bit. And Doc was on it like two weeks ago, fucking trashing the Bucks. He was like, they're so ass. Like, Dame isn't, he doesn't have his heart in it. Like, you know, he's doing his raspy voice. And like, he's like, they can't play defense. They're not going to be able to win in the playoffs. Like, blah, 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 blah. Just fucking trash, trashing him. And now mm. he's the coach. Yeah. And not for nothing, I'm sick of Doc coaching rival teams. And I know people are going to be like, <laughs> but he sucks. So you should be happy. Yes, but I'm sick of having to fucking trash him because I mm. like Doc. I don't I like I just grew up like he was the coach of the Celtics. He's like not somebody that really gives you a reason to hate him. He's just like a pretty decent guy, I think. Yeah. Well, now you have don't to hate him. Don't me stuff that he did that I didn't know about if it happened. <laughs> now you have to hate him, you know, right? Now I have to hate him. <clears throat> yeah. Terry Rozier, now I have to hate him. Like this is just a Tough. bad day. Like when and if Kelly Olynyk gets traded to the, the Sixers, gonna have to hate him. <laughs> gonna have to hate him. Who else? Uh, Marcus Morris on the Sixers have to hate him. <laughs> have to hate him. Tough. Tough. God look. forbid yeah. if the Grizzlies <clears throat> trade Marcus somewhere. You, you remember that period where it's like maybe he goes to the Bucks? Disaster. Yeah. Maybe they still do. Uh, I don't think they will. They they paid too much for him to trade him after it's one year of injuries. <clears throat> um. Yeah, the Bucks are in shambles, which is funny. Uh, next thing we got is the absurdities of the performances uh, <laughs> from God, Joel Embiid and Carl Anthony Towns. Same night. They both had like 50 past the third quarter um, and then very different ways. So and Embiid then, yeah, got and 70. Things changed. <laughs> Embiid got 70. And for as much as you want to say stat bad, they only won by 10. So it's not like they did end up winning by like 30 and he stayed in the fourth yeah, quarter. Like the blowout. But like there, there does come a certain <laughs> point where it's like you only have like 60 points with good amount of time remaining and once you yeah. might as well just try and for what it's worth a quote from Embiid after the game he was like i was telling them like play the right way don't feed me the ball like let's just win the game which respect uh and also far more valid than devin bookers for what it's worth yeah because <laughs> like everybody was in on that stat pad it was like the celtics <laughs> were in on it too they were fucking following him but uh also part of the Embiid quote i don't know if you're gonna read it hmm I forget what player it was took a shot and the crowd booed him. Triple they were right? mad. No. no, they were mad like somebody on the Sixers took a shot instead of giving <laughs> the ball to Embiid. I didn't see that. That's funny, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, He got 70. Carl Anthony Towns only ended up with 62. He had like 54 with six minutes left in the third. And then the Timberwolves tried to feed him the ball to the point where they lost the game 128 to 125. Really? Did they lose the game, but they also ruined Chris Finch's week. Did you hear what Chris Finch said? Can I read the quote? So read Chris quote. Finch after the game uh, called it a, quote, absolutely disgusting performance of defense and immature basketball. I mean, there's lots of times when just because you scored two or three points in a row or buckets in a row, you know, obviously you're going to try to feed the hot hand. But at some point, we got to get back to making the right play, get back to doing the right things. Um, town said having a night like the, uh, night like that on a loss doesn't feel very good or historic. <laughs> no shit, buddy. <laughs> well, the best part about this whole Carl Towns thing is he started off hot and then like got slightly less hot and then got slightly less hot and then became ass and then got and bad. then he got benched. Chris Finch said, like I said, there's a lot of ways to be immature, a lot of ways to be immature. There was a lot of immature performances here throughout the roster. We totally disrespected the game ourselves and we got exactly no integrity for the game. Exactly what we deserved, he said. Private uh, chat. Yeah. Pull Brutal. it up. What is it? Best Let's part see. of this whole thing. Oh, God. Let me no, see. Is it a video? It's not, Do oh, I... God. It's a video. You're good. All right. Let's share. Sorry. I have a lot of I tabs literally have already sent this to you. Uh, ta... Let's see. Here we go. Best part. <laughs> Sound up. But he has now. <laughs> I love Leaky. He's never made a free throw as a pro. <laughs> this is the guy icing hold on, hold the up. game for the Timberwolves to lose with Eric Collins on the call. Hold up. Oh! <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I need to the blur book that. <laughs> no, I was trying to find. So there was a call. He, he did it again today. Uh, Leaky Black made a shot, and he just goes, Leaky! <laughs> he just screamed. And I was trying to find it, but then I fucking typed in leaky into the search 
far like a moron and i'm gonna blur that so it doesn't i don't want that on the screen uh the uh we find it when oh i first God. saw that call i was like sitting with my dad and we were watching the dallas game with, with the celtics and i was doubled over laughing <laughs> because you know i got it the I mean, yeah. like obviously Minnesota cannot hear the call as it's happening, but it was all time ridiculous. Is he ready here? You betcha! Leaky! It's only like five minutes in the second quarter left. <laughs> like it's not even like a close crunch time part of the game. I mean, it's got to be. Terrible and it's against the Pistons. Heard. It's got to be terrible to be named Leaky, right? Am I crazy? <laughs> That's awful. It's a kind of a fun name, though. Like it's like it's like a name that like nobody has, but it's not like one of the, like the new school like different names. It's like an old school like that would be somebody's nickname in like the fifties. His name is Retchin Malik Black. I, I don't know if I said the right R E R E C H O N, but they call him Leaky. Uh, Leaky's yeah, terrible. From Malik. I, well, yeah, I know, but that, <laughs> Leaky's still fucking tragic. Well, you know that like you know he like picked that then. I doubt it. I bet his parents like started calling him Leaky, and then it just caught on, and then everybody called him Leaky, or his teammates called him Leaky, and he was like, "Oh fuck, I'm Leaky now." Well, he's like an adult; he can like put Malik <clears throat> on the like the form. Yeah, at that point, it's like whatever. I don't know. I guess he does. He must not mind it if he did do it. Um, like it's like when bam. I, I don't. I I've never been in the NBA. Bam. Yeah, but like when you get hired at a job, a lot of times they're like, "What's your preferred name?" Mm. What is the best? It's got. I mean, the answer is Metal World Peace. What's the best all-time name switch? Maybe it's Kareem. Name actually, Kareem. switch? Yeah, name switch. What was the guy we did earlier? PJ Washington. He's like, I'm Paul now. Yeah. Kareem's <laughs> up there. Metal World Peace up there. John Carlo Stanton changed his name to John Carlo from, what was it, Mike Stanton? I think it was. That's baseball. But Oh, I didn't um, know that was I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, he used to go by Mike Stanton, but now he goes by John Carlo. Um, his name is... What's his real name? Giancarlo Cruz Michael Stanton. He used to be Mike Stanton. Oh. And now he's Giancarlo. Um, Mike Stanton's kind of cooler. <clears throat> I, really? Giancarlo is a sick name. Yeah, but like, I don't know. Mike Stanton, like it rolls off the tongue better. <clears throat> mm. He sounds like a tough kid from like the like i don't know like the bronx like it would be perfect oh i've got sorry now we're getting fully off track but i don't give a fuck we, we're, we're gonna, this is a, uh what's the word chalked uh <laughs> chalked is the word that's not what i was looking for um this is a shit post podcast anyways um <clears throat> let's see i found a bleach report article so we're gonna steal their content again thank you to john gilbert best and worst cha- name changes in sports history oh how do we forget that <clears throat> yeah ocho cinco ahmad rashad uh, I don't even know who this is. He's, he's okay. He was um a reporter in the nineties for NBC. Bobby Moore to Ahmad Rashad. <laughs> this football player's name was Kar- <laughs> 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 his name was Karim Abdul Jabbar. Uh, he was born Sharman Shah and would eventually be given the name Karim Abdul Jabbar by his imam. Uh, he played football at UCLA and wore number thirty three. <laughs> that's all time uh eventually the lawsuit by the fa- <laughs> kareem fucking sued him <laughs> that's kind of fucked unless he was oh like selling God. merchandise <laughs> yeah he changed the name to abdul kareem al jabbar uh, which is just because insane. like if that other kareem was like an accountant he's not getting mm. sued he got sued because he's good at football good enough to be a pro i didn't know pele was not his given name uh it comes from people making fun of him mispronouncing his fi- favorite childhood footballer, goalkeeper named Bile. His real name is Edson Arantes do Nascimento, which Pele is objectively cooler. Muhammad Ali changed his name from Cassius Clay. Cassius Clay would have been epic. I mean, both are sick names. He kind of two for two. Like w. that was a military thing, though. Like I think that was Kareem too. Like they convert him so they don't have to like get drafted. I think. Mm. I think that, yeah, maybe, I don't know. They were both Muslim. Anyways, if I'm wrong, please, um, like, forgive me. But I'm pretty no sure idea. that's what happened. Uh, Chris Jackson changed his name to Mahmoud Abdul Raif. Cool name as well. Bison Dele. I'm sorry. Brian Williams. And then he played one. He played as Brian Williams for seven years and changed it to Bison Dele. Uh, tribute to his Native American and African descent. Uh, came off as another eccentric chapter. <laughs> Jesus. Hulk Hogan. What was his real name? 
Terry Jean Terry. Balea. Yeah, Hulk Hogan's better. It doesn't count. He's a wrestler. I'm sorry. Rod Smart used he hate me as his moniker while playing in the only season of the I've XML. heard of that guy before. That's horrendous. World be free. Well, like they all had from... nicknames. It's like the Globetrotters. Yeah, but he hate me sucks. <laughs> it was cool the way they explained it in like a, a documentary. Lloyd Bernard free to world be free. Sick. W. Marvelous Mar- Marvin Hagler. Legally changed Shout out name to world Marvelous. be free in our comments. <clears throat> True. Shout out world be free. Charles Atlas from Angelo Siciliano. How long is this fucking list? We're almost done. We're at 12 to 16. We got a few more. I'm just going to look at basketball ones. I don't care about these. God, sham, God. PC. And that is awesome. God, sham, God is sick. He's a Chad coach Tristan the now. Legend. Really? I didn't know that. Yep. That is sick. Anyway, sorry. He's the one that the, the dribble move. You know what I'm talking about. How, yeah, yeah, yeah. How did we even get on that? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't leaky, remember. Leaky. leaky oh, black. leaky. We've, cha- we've talked about three different name changes this podcast. PJ. Nate Williams, Leaky Black. Yeah. Um, well, we actually talked about a bunch. Well, now we fuck you. Next thing we got uh, is teams are interested reportedly in Robert Williams from Chris Haynes, uh, stating that, you know, teams are finally not last. Trade for him. <laughs> yeah. He um, was even last on the dock thing, even though he had it first. Like he was somehow last. I, that's insane. Uh, report from Chris Haynes from his podcast with Mark Stein. Hashtag this league uncut. Uh, if they get the right deal in place, they will be open. He's somebody that's definitely available. Uh, Haynes said, teams feel like you'd be somebody that could get on the cheap right now and allow him to continue recovering, continue rehabbing in hopes of, that he can blossom back into the Robert Williams Celtics. that we've seen when he can be playing at a high, when he was playing at a high level with the Celtics. Celtics obviously can't trade for him right now. However, let me paint a picture. Get John Conchar six million this year. Get him combined with a couple of, I'm just fucking around, but Rob teams, back. any, any object from, from a non green eyes, green glasses perspective, what team do you think should trade for Robert Williams? Oklahoma city. <clears throat> I see it. Yeah. Okay. I like it. I, I wonder if they'd rather a, a big body rather than a, a athletic guy though. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I No, no, I, I know what you mean, but he'd be good. Um, it, would, it would be good there though. I agree. Uh, past that pacers. I don't know if they need another big, but he'd be electric with Halliburton. Do they? I, I don't think, think they need one. Turner's now, good for them. Turner's like fine. Him. Jalen Smith's fine. The Jay Jackson's fine. They don't need it. But um, I wonder, I don't think it happened. I wonder a world where Zion gets more comfortable guarding fives and you throw a rubber. Actually, the spacing would be too bad there. Nick. But <clears throat> the Knicks could make some sense. Yeah. Um, the Chaz. Danny goes back and gets Rob and plays him in Utah. Um, I wonder if Dallas would want to do it. They've got Derek Lively, obviously. He'd be a backup to him at that point, but, like, they could use some floor spacing. Maybe Memphis takes a chance. I don't know. At this point, any team that wants to take a chance on a young big, it would make sense for them to go get it. When you were frozen, I said maybe Dallas would do but they already have Derek Lively, so would they need a second one? Maybe get both anyways, but, I yeah, Knicks is another one. Uh, I did acknowledge it when you froze. Pistons, all the bigs get all, get them all in there. <laughs> so the Pistons are the Lakers, except they don't have the clout. Like Pistons are getting everybody. <laughs> so they're getting Celtics. Siakam. Uh, all right, Zach Levine. <laughs> let's uh, let's move on over to the Ratless here. We'll close it out. Would you like to kick us off here? I don't have much. I have a couple. Okay, things uh, bank, Ratless but... is me. So I did the thing on the pod uh, the other day. I talked about the Chiefs being like the Celtics, but obviously yeah. the Celtics have not won. So the yes. reason I talked about that is doing some for Celtics blog. I posted it. It was like 1500 words. I did give an explanation, but the thing about when you write something is people usually don't click it. If they see it on Twitter, they'll just be like, this guy's moron. <laughs> so I love people being like, this guy's moron today. <laughs> and some yes. people making good points that they're probably more like the 49ers to which I say, I don't know anything about football, but I was hearing a lot about the Chiefs making the AFC championship games. And I was like, oh, Celtics are always in the conference finals, but they're different. And it's kind of sad. And that was kind of the point <laughs> of it. But yeah, I really didn't title it properly because I didn't know what to title it. So I was like, oh, well, people will click this. So you got clicks. I, you I get what I get clicks. But people they definitely it. are probably more like the 49ers upon further review. VAR. 
<clears throat> yeah. yeah. Uh, Ratless Henry. I tried. I hope you listen to this, Henry. So, oh, you I know, know you know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so, a couple days ago, when we recorded Talk and Seas for two Wednesday, we recorded the latest Talk and Seas episode Monday. Sorry, Today's Wednesday. recorded. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> I got my days mixed up. When we recorded Monday's Talk and Seas episode, uh, whenever I have something earlier than like noon, I text Henry. He's like, "Hey, can you wake me up when you leave at seven thirty? Just so I'm like, I'm out of the REM sleep. I'm initially like up once that I can go back to sleep and wake up. You know what I'm saying? It's easier to wake up mm-hmm. when you're not in like deep sleep. Whatever. The text will wake me up. He doesn't acknowledge me. I got up anyways. I was fine. Um, Alpha next move. day. Yeah, good. Chill. Waking Tuesday comes around. Noon. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday comes around. Um, and Henry texts me. Spam texts me. I get like 9, 10, 11 texts from Henry. Jack, wake up. Did he get up? Did he get up? He texts my mom to call me. He texts Sam to wake me up. I wake up at like, I didn't get out of bed till like 2 that day or 1 30. I, I didn't have anything to do. I was like, whatever. I'm going to stay up late and then sleep in. Whatever. Henry, I text him like, Henry. The text message I sent you asking to wake me up was from fucking yesterday. Like, did he just like like it was it was a late he text? It was like until Tuesday. Yeah, it was like three a.m. The text was, but it said yesterday, so maybe he got confused because he thought it was like the morning. But like, and then he just goes, "Oh, my bad." I'm like, "What the? My bad." He texts me on Snapchat. He goes, what "Was he maybe supposed this- to say?" I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it's just like brother. How how did you? Would you rather him be me? like me and be like, "No, you're wrong." <laughs> Well, my thing is, how did you text me that many times without checking when the text from and realizing? Yeah. Like, I guess it's not unlike me to. Sometimes oversleep. you're in a panic, like you think you fucked up, and you're like, "Oh no!" Yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess, like I said, it's not unlike me to oversleep alarms and stuff. So he was probably just assuming I was sleeping, which I was, but I didn't have to be up anyway. So uh, that was that was funny. Anyways, uh, uh, ratless the heating in this upstairs. So I told Jack before mm. the show, but like this upstairs where I'm at is either 45 fucking degrees or it's 95 degrees <laughs> today. It's like 45. Mm-hmm. It doesn't help that I was kind of cold when I got home, but there have been days like over the last week where I've been sitting here doing a show and like dying. Cause it's so hot. I have to, I have to open the window. It gets bad in here too. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like I went over there and, and like, I think I would rather it be chilly. Cause like I can always like put more clothes put a on. Sweatshirt. That's my thing. Yeah. Yeah. But hundred yeah, percent. Kind of annoying. Cause when it when it was hot, I really couldn't do anything. Like the setting is the same. It's still mm-hmm. on like heat, and it's still <laughs> set to like X degrees, and it's just different. I don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because the downstairs heat's not on, but that doesn't make sense. It was like frigid temperatures over the weekend. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's been cold. I like that. I, I, that's why I like the cold more than the heat, though, because I can always put on more layers. Like I'm chilling. Um, yeah, but, and uh, usually uh, when it's cold, the Celtics are on. I will say, what's the what's the perfect temperature outside for you? What's like the? Yes, this is good. Sixty five degrees. See, I'm more like like fifty. Like I like it chilly, so I can wear a sweatshirt and be good. But anything you can wear, long sleeves and shorts. That is okay. objectively the best outfit. Yeah, for somebody okay. with my build. I- I can back. What are you saying? <laughs> Meaning, like I don't have very big arms, but my legs. Are oh, toned oh, oh. When I run, even though my arms I, are toned too. Don't worry about it. Mm. But you know. Oh, I forgot about this ratless. Um, ratless. Uh, men's league refs. So I, I subbed in for Cam. Men's league uh, refs. Interesting. Go on. Cam Tavatabai. Shout out him. Beast Celtics Live. Go check it out. Reds for Celtics Wire. Uh, he needed a sub or an extra guy, extra body for his men's league. So I went to play with them. Uh, it was funny. A guy on the other team I went to college with. So I, I kind of knew who somebody was, which was random. But <clears throat> um, shout out Owen. Even though we had never like spoken. We just knew each other from around campus. He's yeah, like, you go like here. It was nod. like, <clears throat> head nod. Yeah. Anyways, um, I was, we played two, three zone. I was Brooke Lopez. I was the tree. I, that's what I did. I stood down low. I stood there. Property. So I, I went like this and I, I jumped up and I went straight up and a guy ran into me. Like fully like picked it up and went like this. And the ref called a foul on me. And I turned, I go, Why is that a foul? He goes, well, just stand there next time. I'm like, I'm allowed to jump. Like, I'm a, that, that's not hello. Like, in yeah. fact, I have to jump because if I had stood there, it is a foul because I'm in the restricted area. So you're well, just you're wrong. The there's no restricted area. I well, you know what I'm saying though. Like the general Update, rule is that I do have to jump. Perished. Yeah, the heat lost. Losers. Um you know, like that's just the wrong rule though. And next time I didn't jump 
and he still called a fucking foul. <laughs> like, so we, I'm just not allowed to defend. What are we doing? <laughs> like, did you guys was, win handedly or close? Uh, we won pretty handily. They started like intention. There's no like shot clock, so they started intentionally fouling with like a minute fifteen left or whatever. We won by like seven or eight. So, like, we won the game. Oh, we you know the Rockets did that, except there was actually a shot clock. This is true. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, we won by a fine amount. Men's I finished league refs. Interesting. Oh, finish your finish your stat lines. I was just saying, I finished like uh, they, I don't think they actually tracked stats, um, but I finished with something like I hit one three, which was the only shot I made. I I was like. I didn't shoot very well. I shot like one for four, one for three from three. And Lights then I missed two around I took. Yeah, I didn't shoot well, but I got five rebounds, three blocks. So we three take blocks those. Is good. <clears throat> three blocks. Well, they kept like fucking running here. into me and I had to start like jumping straight up. I will say, well, sorry, I'm ta- doing tangents now. The annoying part was one of the refs understood what was a legal like defense. So like he wouldn't call it when I straight but straight up. And then when we switched sides, I got fucked by the other guy Yeah, because he didn't know. But I did end up getting three blocks. They were getting mad. Also, they they didn't understand how rules work or like what the rules were. Like the other team was complaining. They were in transition and they dribbled it off one of our guys' foot and they go, kick ball, kick ball. I'm like, it's not a kick ball if you fucking dribble it off his foot. It, it has to be intentional, you moron. What do we do? Yeah. So, um, but we won. We ended up winning the game. Uh, it was good. Anyways, what were you saying? So men's league refs are an interesting point. I don't think I've talked about it on the show before. Mm. I have talked about the men's league team not being very good this session. But yes. one of the things that happens every single time we play is everybody's up in arms about the officials. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> like these guys get paid by the hour and they have to do probably like five games. Do you mm. think they're going to prolong their work day to, to call a foul for you when you drive into three people? No, they're not. But every single week, also we like lose by 20. And they're like, dude, these refs. It's like, what do you mean, dude, these refs? We lost by 20. The refs weren't the problem. I was just more saying like the, the inconsistency of, bro, I'm allowed to play defense. Why? What are we doing? It's like every <laughs> week they're shocked that we're not getting foul calls. It's like maybe we should win. If we well, won, it, maybe they would yeah. respect you enough to call the foul. It was the opposite the other day. They were giving him every fucking call. I'm like, oh, yeah, hello, what do you want me to well, do? It's funny because like I played in like another men's league over the summer and it was like run by different people. And we had yeah. some mostly different officials, but there was one guy and he did the game Sunday with us and he's good. But like the the foul calling in the other league was far more consistent. Like it was like more like, oh yeah, that guy got hit. Free throws. Like there were just free throws in the games. Like you would get fouled, <laughs> you would go to the free throw line. It's just not like yeah. this in this place. And like first time you might be a little shocked, but like after that, you're like, ah. Oh, this is a pattern. I don't expect it mm-hmm. to change. I should play better. That's how you should react. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what I tell the Celtics to do. Not a hypocrite. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else? I don't think so. I think I think I got it. I will other although Time I will say bring in the clue. Yeah, last thing on the men's league. A lot of zone. We both played zone and eventually we figured out how to just like <laughs> how to uh I love st- against zones. stand at the free throw line, you move, whatever. However, the other team did a whole huddle of like how to break a zone. And uh, Cam asked like Celtics. one of the teammates, and they were like, um, you know, do you want to stop playing zone? Because like they're going for it, they won't expect us to come out in men. And I think his name was Olo, the guy we played with. He was like, nah, we're coming out in zone again. And then they kept trying to do this thing where they would send it to the free throw line, kick it back out, and then hit the guy in the corner. <laughs> but then we were playing uh the zone. And so Cam or whoever's at the top just pressed and cut off the passing lane. We got like six straight points of transition because they just passed directly into us because we knew exactly what the fuck they were doing. And they didn't realize it until they were losing by 11. They just kept doing the same shit. And then the, the guy that we left open in the corner <laughs> just airballed a million fucking threes. You guys gave we just grand. let him do whatever. Grand yeah. Tree. Well, he made one three the whole game, but it was a fucking half court buzzer beater at the half like he shot it from the really? corner of the half yeah he that just shot from the corner of the half and he just nailed it but uh it was it was funny it was like the whole like slam your head against the wall and it'll work eventually right and we just like stole the ball four times anyways i will that's play. all i had if it i'm around a, on a tuesday i will play i will let you and this know is not I'm me inviting again. myself because jack told me i could play yeah I cam play. asked if sam was around as well but no i finished like i said three points five rebounds three says so board man gets paid you know uh, i was also they only called fouls like on ball. Like I was going for rebounds. I was getting fucking punched. While I was trying to grab the board. <laughs> they had like three guys. Like there was one Puffing guy who was up, bigger buddy. than I am and two guys who were taller than I am. And they were just like fucking trying to hack it. I'm like, 
guys like I, just because i'm getting a rebound doesn't mean i can't get fouled like please i'm <laughs> like Christoph, the like, for you showing my scars but go ahead but this yeah, is so it. much fun when you actually go outside <laughs> <laughs> But actually, not just like do. the dog. <laughs> well, when I when I <laughs> the dog on the Rattlers every episode. Well, rat, it's the my, only thing you see. Well, Rattlers the dog. It did pee again. That fucking. <laughs> <laughs> well, every day she fucking pees in the house, and and you say, well, Jack, maybe you got up to let her out. She was in bed, like she was in my room from like eleven on, so she didn't, couldn't even make it three hours without pissing in the house. Uh, just, anyway. Um, I'll be moving to Austin in September, so I'll be out and about more than uh, nice. now. It'll be good. You'll have, you'll have good stuff because you'll be like in like a city like area, right? <laughs> I'll be in society. <laughs> yeah, you like you'll like go like walk. I'm gonna walk to the Airbox Center. I'm gonna play pick up. Yeah, two rounds, rounds, actually. I I just remembered one. Hit it. Let's so this is not gonna be the closer because it's not like as funny. The closer's funny. But uh so a little update on my favorite little story going around Rhode Island. So if you don't know, heading into Providence, there is 95, which is also in Massachusetts, mm. if you live there, and literally everywhere on the east, east Coast, not West Coast, East Coast. You've seen 95. You've got it. 195 goes east of Providence, so it goes out into the East Bay of Rhode Island and also like towards Cape Cod. There is a very important bridge on 195 that connects the two bays in Rhode Island. I think I saw this, yeah. That bridge has been closed. It has fucked traffic for the last month. And then our brain dead dumbass director of the Department of Transportation spoke this week. And he said, more or less, we might fix it a little. We might fix it a lot. Or we might have to demolish it. We may have to just, like, destroy this bridge. And, like, the reason why that this is a problem is because whatever inspections they were supposed to do were definitely not being done. And I have it on authority. They have not been done, personally. Oh, sources. Yeah. They have not been done. They definitely did them, like, once, and they were like, oh, fuck, we should have been doing this. And then they're like, how do we cover this up? And then this dumbass goes out there and he's like, we might fix a little, might fix a lot, might just have to demolish it. They're just going to demolish it. But he didn't come out and say they're going to demolish it because he didn't want to shock like the, the whole state and be like, oh, man, like, wow, this traffic's so bad already. Like, imagine when we can't even use the highway at all. And like, I don't even drive on this highway, but if it still like comes on a 95 because the traffic is so bad. That people like are just bleeding all over. Like it's just like, oh, traffic on this street now, traffic on that street now that you didn't <laughs> usually have traffic on. <clears throat> These guys are trying to put like square pegs in the round hole. And it's also like a combination, I'm just speaking in memes, of Kevin dropping the chili in the office when like they, they're like, Oh, like, what do we do? Like this bridge, we can't use it anymore. And like, I don't know. It's just been like a colossal like shit show in, in the Department of Transportation who I've always had beef with. But now I just have to have my like victory lap of these people are truly like some of the worst people on the planet. So, yeah. <laughs> um, right. If you have a closer, I can do two quick ones and then you can close. Do, if you, do two do. quick ones. <laughs> okay. So I will close. Throw back to last pod. I'm not going to do the effects where I throw it back because I don't want to. Uh, but remember when I was asking. Duke Ratliff. Uh, <laughs> Remember when I we were watching the uh, the, the Grant falling over, and I was yes. trying to figure out what the fucking gif was that I was looking for that he. Oh for. yes, I did see this today. Well, a like, commenter informed me that uh, they, they knew what it was, and so I'm gonna let me play the clip of Grant <laughs> falling on the ground like a moron. And then you uh, want to pull then, up the gif? Yes, I have. Right, I'll both. move the rat. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, moved. so. Here's Grant uh, falling over like a moron. Um, here is uh, here we go. So Grant gets the ball, dribbles up. Watch him slide across the floor. That's what we're watching here. <laughs> this just just yeah, <laughs> ragdoll. And this is uh, <laughs> this is what I was <laughs> That's what, the Joker. Yeah, and yeah, just... I, yeah, I didn't I didn't like catch what you were talking about. There's been too many Jokers. That's why. Yeah. 
This is just like a guy dressed up as a two trying to skateboard. Anyways, that's what it was. Is it? Second one. Yeah, it's not actually from a movie because you see all the skateboards around. It's just fucked around. I just thought it was like the behind the scenes stunt double. I don't think so because there's a bunch of guys with skateboards. So I think he was just skating. I believe you. Um, Other one. I might have talked about something like this before. Maybe this exact thing. So uh, I beg you, if you're ever on dating apps, give more than hey. Dude, yeah, <laughs> not you. Just I'm talking to the audience. I hope I'm not. So I, I was messaging this girl on Hinge, right? Listen to this one. Listen to this episode, please. This is the one um, you should listen to. <laughs> and <laughs> I messaged this girl and bland answers, bland answers, bland answers, nothing. And so we I stopped, messaged, like, whatever. It got to the point where I was like, hey, can I get your number? Do you want to talk here? Whatever. I was like, you know what? Mm. Maybe I'll just give her be- benefit of the doubt text her i'm like hi this is jack from hinge how are you she goes hey done i quit i'm i quit did I you not it. respond I, I i don't even remember what i said i think we had like oh. two more talking points and i haven't like gone. like hey you're 23 you're not fucking 12 can we can we can, some effort yeah please. like can we, can we do so, just yeah, like, give try a little harder it, it's it's tragic horrendous Anyways, being a man on a dating app is not fun <laughs> I would argue that being a woman on a dating app is probably far worse, but yeah. <laughs> it just anyway. comes with like the stuff you don't want, but you get the stuff you do want too. this. You just yeah, get but... nothing. <laughs> I would take, take nothing over getting harassed. I don't think that would be what I would go for. Anyways, this is truly a shit post episode of the podcast. But... This is the greatest episode we've ever done. <laughs> Because you is, haven't even heard this yet, you're gonna. The love best this. part is, something's gonna play. No one's gonna fucking watch it. No one's gonna see this shit. No, I hope they click on it. All right. Anyways, go ahead. Let's All move. right. So, <sighs> rat list, uh, my friend's younger cousin. So, which friend? Can we know which friend? Do I know the friend? Uh, my friend Tyler. Um, so okay. his his younger cousin will occasionally play Xbox and, and join the Xbox party. As anybody that has ever played Xbox knows, the Xbox party is a very unsafe place. Is this... Can we get an age of the kid? Just for context. Sorry. I want to interrupt you. Uh, Like, I don't know. Like... Below 13? Not below 13. Like, like mid-teens. Mid-teens. Sorry. I will stop interrupting. I just wanted the context. So, anyways. Yeah. Xbox party is not a safe place. Like, it's not going to go well for you. So, anyways, my one friend's fucking with him pretty bad. Like, he's like... I don't remember what he was saying to get him riled up, but he had him riled up. And he's like, I'm, I'm going to, I think he had his phone number. He was calling him and he kept calling him over and over again to like, get him mad when he was playing. <laughs> and so we're all in the, the party and the kid gets another phone call and he, he picks it up and he goes, what's up fucker. Like trying to fuck with him. And it's his mom. <laughs> I, I think we've all had like a moment like that, though, and it's just he awful. He didn't check the call right. No, he was feeling slick. He was like, "Oh, it's just this guy again." Was the mom none too pleased? Yeah, she was none. She was like, "You're done with Xbox for the day." <laughs> and if you've never like had like this experience where you've been on Xbox, there is no better like Xbox moment than when someone's parents pull them off Xbox because they're like, "Whatever happened to where they don't want them playing anymore?" Yeah. It's all time. I told I you you're gonna like it. <laughs> as soon as you started, as soon as you started that he picked up the phone, I'm like, oh, someone. It wasn't the dude. It wasn't him. It wasn't him. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I was telling my dad the story oh. today, and he like shared something similar with me. But it was That's like, awesome. you know, my dad's 70, so he didn't have Xbox. <laughs> Oh my fucking god! That yeah, that's that's good. All right, let's close there. A long, <laughs> fucking ridiculous episode. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. We appreciate it very much. If you stuck with us to this point, f- more fucking power to you. Thank you. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe to How About Them Celtics. Uh, road to three thousand. I guess we can start saying that now. Let's let's chug our way there. Uh, eventually. We're walking. <laughs> we're walking. Our car broke but... down. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Someone, please, fucking God, bring the jump start cables, please. Help <laughs> us. Uh, leave, leave, us, leave us a review on Apple. Uh, please don't call me Ganky. Uh, we're both sure sober, to... by the way. <laughs> yeah, right. Just in case you're wondering, like I, I was legitimately. Say, 
I know. Sam so, froze. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say we should do a drunk pod, but you don't drink. Maybe I'll do a drunk pod and you can just listen to me fucking ramble. I'll just fuck um, with you. Yeah, you could do it. I'm not like I'm pretty coherent when I'm drunk, though. Like, I'll just be like, you'll probably just talk more. Fun. Yeah, yeah, that's all it is. Anyways, uh, thank you all for tuning in. Five stars on Apple and Spotify would be much appreciated. Leave us a review and follow us. Uh, and yeah, I'll let Sam wrap it up. Hey, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any other great content like this hour and 40 minute podcast we just dropped on you about nothing. We're also putting out game recaps on days that we don't do a pod after the game. Uh, we're also doing Talking Seas with Bobby. That'll be up to later today. We have game, or not game recaps, but we have those, but film breakdowns and trade rumor breakdowns. And we're live a half hour before every game. So if you like how this went today, those streams are usually like that. So just come hang out and it'll be fun. Promise. Uh, you can also find us on Spotify and Apple, like Jack mentioned. The full-length pods and game recaps will be there audio only. If you follow us, those will go right to your inbox. Leave a five-star review and say something nice about the pod. You can also reach out to us via email. You saw a couple people do it today. The email is hbtcpod at gmail.com. Caden, you have won the – or it's Caden, right? Caden Carpenter? Christian. Christian Christian Calderon. Carpenter? Christian Calderon. Oh, <laughs> oh for two. What the hell's wrong with me? Christian, you won Impop Nito. Email us at the email, please. <laughs> but if you didn't win Impop Nito, you can also email us, and we'll read it and talk to you about what you said. Uh, you can also find us on – Socials. How about them? C's is the handle for Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Facebook is just the name of the podcast. Our live streams are there and on Twitter and on YouTube. Jack's Twitter is at Jack's One NBA. Mine is at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Bye. Jack Taco. Come on. Tacos. Tacos having some fun here.